Hello and welcome, I'm your CodeMonkey, and here's a quick video on how to change post-processing through code. Now in this video I'm talking about post-processing when using URP, not the package that you use with the built-in render pipeline. Those are two completely different systems. If you don't know the difference between those two, go watch my quick video on it. And this method, I'm showing it here in URP, but it works exactly the same in HGRP, just not with the built-in RP. If you want a 10 second answer, then here it is. Just go inside the volume, grab the profile, call the try get and get the volume component or the effect that you want. Then just go inside that effect and modify anything you want. But if you want to learn how I actually learn how to find this, then keep watching the video. Quick mention, the Black Friday sale is starting this week. There will be tons of assets and tools on sale. There are flash deals up to 70% off, which won't last for a little while, but you can see exactly when they are coming up. So check it out to the link in the description. So here's the scene and I just have a simple post-processing volume. Over here I got a game object with the volume component and a bunch of effects. So I've got bloom, so we have a nice glow and color adjustment, just adding a bit of contrast and a bit of saturation. Also, if you don't know how to get bloom or a glow working, check out my quick checklist. Now the goal here is I want to modify this through code. For example, I want to press a button and over here modify the bloom intensity. Now due to how the post-processing system works, it's actually a bit tricky to figure out how to do this. You might think you can just access the volume component, so let's try doing that. So let's make a new C -sharp script. Call this change post processing. Let's make a game object to run it and attach a script. Okay. Now here, let's first add a very simple serialized field, make it of type volume. And in order to access volume, we need to add using unity engine and it's inside the rendering. So we add a volume, let's call it volume. Okay. This now in the editor, let's drag our reference. All right. And now here, let's do a very simple on a private void update and on update, let's listen to input. So input, let's say get key down for T for testing. So when this happens, we want to change the bloom. So for example, if we go inside the volume and let's say we find something called intensity and nope, we can find it. If I try to find bloom, nope, also cannot find it. I cannot find color adjustments, any saturation, anything like that. Nope, none of that exists. All we can modify is, for example, the weight. Then we can also modify the profile. So these are pretty much the only things that we have access to. And in the inspector over here, we can see what those things are. So basically we can access everything up here. So the mode, weight, priority, and profile, but nothing down here. So nothing on the actual specific effects. So this is the tricky part. The way that this volume system works is with a kind of component system. So very much like with regular game objects where you attach components, like for example, over here, the volume component, you've got the transform component and so on. For the volume, this whole thing works pretty much exactly the same way. So you have the volume and then each effect is added as kind of a component. So over here, we added two components. So the bloom and the color adjustment. And the reason why I know this is because thankfully this system has all of the source code available. One way to get there is simply to right click on the volume component and just click on edit script. And here it is. It shows up the script on my visual studio. Alternatively, if that doesn't work for you, you can browse that script by going over here onto the project window. And if you scroll down, you can see the packages drop down menu. So you can see all the packages that are installed. And by the way, if this one does not appear, so if you click here and the packages is empty, if so, then up here on the top right, there's this button with a little eye icon. If this one is toggled, then it pretty much hides the packages so we cannot expand it. If this one is untoggled, then you can see them. With the packages visible, now we can scroll down and you can find all of the various packages and all the various things. So all of the source code is over here included. Now in this case, finding the volume component inside all of this is actually pretty complex. But thankfully, over here, we also have a real nice search bar. So over here, we can search for volume. And now by default, this one will probably be over here only searching in assets. So it's only going through your own assets for this project and looking for anything with that text. Now here, of course, we don't find the actual volume component because it does not exist in the assets, but rather in the packages. So if you click on this, yep, there you go. Now it shows you everything. And now here, if you scroll down, yep, over here, we can see the actual volume component. And if we click on the X button on the search bar over here, we can see where it is exactly. So it lives inside the core RP library, inside runtime, then we've got the volume and over here, the volume component. So you can double click on this. And yep, here is all of the source code for the actual volume component. And if we look at this, we can find all of the things that we can actually see on the inspector. So for example, the is global, we can see the priority, the blend distance, the weight, and over here, the volume profile, both the shared one and the normal one. So here in the inspector, yep, we are seeing all of these fields. And how this system works is that the effects are not really attached to the volume, but rather each volume has a profile and then the profile is what contains the various effects. So over here, if we go inside the profile, which let's see the type. So this one is of type volume profile. 
So once again, in the project files, let's go over here and we find the volume profile right next to the volume. And now here we can see right away the way that this works is over here we've got a list of volume component for all of our components. So this is how all of the effects are added. They basically all extend this base volume component. So now for example, we can do the exact same thing to find the bloom effect. So let's use the search bar and let's look for bloom. And over here, yep, we find it right away. So here it is. Let's click the X to see where it's located. So it's here on the universal RP runtime under overrides. Yep, here we've got the bloom. And over here, we can see that that one does extend the volume component. And then over here, we do see our field. So finally, we have access to the intensity. So basically what we need to do is access the volume. Then from the volume, we access the profile. Then on the profile, we have the script. And on this script, we have the components list. We can either cycle through this one or this one actually also has a very useful function. Down here we can see a try get function. So we can pass in a component type and it will return it if it contains that effect. So we do that to get the bloom and then we can modify the intensity. So let's do all of that. Over here on the volume, let's first grab the profile. Then let's call try get and we're going to try to get of type bloom. And for bloom we need to figure out where it exists. So we can go inside the bloom field and over here we can see it exists inside this Unity Engine Rendering Universal. So then here we add our using. So we find bloom, out bloom for our bloom. And if the profile has this effect, then over here now we can go into bloom and modify the intensity and set the value to something. So let's say 10F. Okay, so that's really it. Let's test. So here it is, everything is looking pretty normal. Now I press the button and you better go, everything nice and shiny. All right, awesome. Now to showcase how this works with literally everything, let's try modifying the color adjustments. Let's modify the saturation. So over here, let's do the exact same thing. Let's do it on a different button. So let's say on the Y, instead of getting the bloom, let's get the color adjustments. So here it is, exactly the same thing. Then we go inside this one. In this case, we want to modify the saturation. Let's set the value and let's put it at minus 100 to get everything perfectly black and white. Okay, so let's test. Okay, so here we are, everything with nice and colors. Now if I press the Y key, there you go, everything perfect, black and white. All right, great. So as you can see, this is how it works. Finally, just for fun, here I have another script. This one is using some animation curves to animate the changing of the effects. Now, if you don't know about animation curves, I cover them in detail in another video. They are a really awesome Unity feature with so many use cases, not just animation. So here I define two curves, one of them to increase intensity and go down, another one to decrease saturation and go back to zero. And over here in the code, I just got these. I do the exact same thing, go inside the volume profile to get the bloom and the color adjustments. With those two references, then on a button, I simply reset the time and then I evaluate the curve and get the value. So everything is pretty much the same, really simple script, just to get it nice and animated. So here it is, and if I press a button, yep, there you go, really nice and shiny. The intensity really goes up and then down. And for the other effect, press the button, there you go, everything becomes nice and black and white. All right, awesome, so here it is. This is how you can modify post-processing through code. And actually the same method is how you can also modify a machine through code, which works very much in the same way with a component system. This method that I showed here is one of the things that I teach in my Ultimate Unity Overview course. In there I teach this method for how to modify any field in any package or Unity tool, and also another more advanced method on how to load the package source code directly into Visual Studio. On top of that, that course also has over 50 lectures, each covering a different tool or feature of the engine. So if you want to learn more on how to better use Unity, check it out. And also before I end this video, let me just briefly mention yet another way to change effects, which is simply to play with the weight. So instead of having just one post-processing volume component, instead of that you can have two. Then on the second one, let's say use a different post-processing profile. Let's add just the bloom. So this one is really intense and you would make sure that this one has a higher priority and over here with the weight you push it down to zero. So with this, with this one with the higher priority but weight of zero and the base one with the standard priority and a weight of one, but this one, if you want to add a nice quick flash, you could simply increase the weight and then decrease. So for example, when the player takes damage, you could just flash the screen by modifying the weight instead of having to actually modify the effect itself. So that's just another quick tip for how you can play around the effects during gameplay. There's many options depending on how you want to use them. All right, hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.